We are at the cemetery because it is Halloween week. Brokers are sharp and they have a lot to say. This is Brokers and Cars Getting Coffee. Hello, it's Erica from High Point. Erica, it's Reed Rasmussen. How are you? Oh, hey, I'm doing great. You up for a chat? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Erica, toast to you. Toast to you. And uh, what are you drinking today? The usual that I typically get is the almond milk latte uh, with cinnamon powder. So it makes it feel sweet, but not actually sweet. <laughs> For me, it's uh, October, so uh, it's pumpkin spice latte time. It's the week of Halloween, so I parked right by a 1854 cemetery in McKinney, Texas. So your family's closely involved with the Houston Rodeo, right? My husband is on the uh, sports medicine committee, so he's on the dirt uh, while the cowboys are doing their thing and the calves scramble. And so if they fall down or they need something, then he's the one that goes and gets them off the dirt and takes them away. <laughs> what does that mean to be a Texan woman this in this day and age? I carry a gun. Uh, we, we wear camo um, <laughs> as long as it's fashionable, right? I like it because we're so big, right? Our, sta our state's so big, so we have plenty of space to uh, to really take up space and, and make an impact. With everything since coronavirus, how much has changed specifically in how you're uh, dealing with your clients? Down here in Houston, everything is driven by oil and gas, right? So industries are very heavy on blue collar. There was still a level of uh, resistance to things like telehealth and, um, technology to you know download this app on your cell phone COVID really catapulted all of our clients to really go okay I know you mentioned this thing one time can we do that <laughs> <laughs> in some cases they were already they already had it they just weren't utilizing it you know that's like telehealth okay you guys were at like 34 percent participation now they're like in the 80 to 90 percent because they're like oh my gosh did you guys realize we had telehealth I'm like yeah, man, we put it in your plan like four years ago. <laughs> One of the things that the, some of the stats are starting to show is that there's going to be an uptick in demand for self-funded cases. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, absolutely. They're looking at stuff going, okay, I know we've never been open to this, or I know that you've mentioned this before, but we're listening now. Down here in Texas, we like to have control and make yeah. our own rules and do our own things <laughs> right when you say hey if you were in a program that would provide you complete transparency on what's going on control of not only your plan spend but whatever the benefits are for your employees how would that make you feel right and their answer is where the heck do i sign you know now you're a workout fiend and you're a crossfitter and now you're a runner too right that label has recently uh, emerged in my life. You know, health has always been a huge component. Family health issues, um, physical ailments, um, mental ailments. They didn't want to have any of those issues. Obviously, it's great from a physical aspect to be able to physically do the things that I want to do, but from an emotional and mental capacity too. It's, it's a big deal. <laughs> you... You actually made the decision years ago to install Employee Navigator in virtually every client, right? Explain. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we, we use that as, you know, just part of our service that we provide to our clients as a way to streamline the solutions that we bring to the table for them. One of the things that I think your company does especially well, you called it showing the love to your clients. Absolutely. Your benefits don't benefit your employees unless they know what they are and how to use them. So you have to make it real to them and applicable to them. And the only way to do that is to show them what it does <laughs> and how to use it. The majority of our clients have at least an option for a high deductible plan. So that means that employees and their dependents, they're having to pay out of their pocket whatever the costs are for whether it's prescription or doctor visits or MRIs. And so if we can put something in their hands that can say, look, it's going to cost you to do it, but if we can find a way to help you save money for those things you're gonna get anyway, everybody wins. And if they use those tools, the advocacy or telehealth, those are not going on their healthcare spend. So it's helping the company too, because those claims are not being reflected on the plan. What advice would you have for other strong women about being in the benefits business? We're always going to be fighting an uphill battle to take up space in this industry. 
and that's okay. And don't apologize for it and just do your thing. I like it. I like it. I think that is a fantastic piece of advice to end on. What else can you tell me about you that a lot of people wouldn't know? I can carry a tune. Really? So every now and then, depending on the night, depending on my mood, you can probably get me at a karaoke. If you were going to make it as a singer, what kind of music would you be singing? Oh my gosh, it would definitely be country. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's so many strong women that make country music. I feel like I can relate in some capacity to it.